That last electrometer repair was too easy, don't you think? Let's tackle something more difficult this time. Got another Keithley electrometer to keep me entertained over the holidays. It's the 619 2 channel model. There's a bit of a shortage of buttons on the front panel. Apparently its last calibration expired in 2006, which is surprisingly recent for such an old instrument. Bought it broken of course, but I'll take the risk and turn it on briefly. Hmm, nothing, apart from this obnoxiously loud fan. That's got to be replaced right away. To open the enclosure, only two screws have to be removed. Nice modular construction under the hood. No stripped screws, no messy solder joints. Chances are I'm the first one to poke around in here, just the way I like it. The first suspect and the easiest one to test is always the power supply. Its output voltages are given in the schematic. Let's compare them to the actual values. Yep. Good. Yeah. Pass. Yeah, whatever, that's all perfectly fine. Nothing's getting hot either, so I think we have to start looking at the modules. Since there were neither beeps nor LEDs, but a couple of suspicious botch wires on the right, I wanted to check the front panel first. But I didn't find anything interesting, except for a manufacturer sticker of the front cover. The board that's controlling the missing buzzer and LED activities is of course the processor board. Let's take a look at that one. Especially that 7805 voltage regulator. Those can fail and do so frequently. The input voltage is fine. The output voltage is not. Uh oh, this is turning into an easy fix. There's our perpetrator, doesn't even have the decency to get warm. I'm going to replace it. Give me 18 seconds. Ready. Okay, let's give it a try. There's hope still. Maybe that wasn't all. Jeez. If you compare the volume of that extremely loud fan and the buzzer, you get an idea how awful that buzzer is. But the display looks promising. I'll put everything back together preliminarily and then we can try to measure something. 10 milliamps. Today's special. Channel B seems to be fine right away. Channel A, not at all, luckily, because that gives us an opportunity to take a closer look at one of those electrometer modules. Would be funny if it turned out to be a shorted protection diode like last time.
I'm wearing rubber gloves for this because some of the components on this module have a higher resistance than a human fingerprint has. Double shielding, very nice. Uh oh, here's a 7908 negative 8 volt linear regulator. I definitely don't have a replacement for that odd component. Ah, oh, innocent. Thank God. Now I'm just continuity checking all components that shouldn't pass current. Found you! It's not a protection diode this time, but the remedy is similar. Just business. Nothing personal. That could be replaced with a normal wet electrolytic, no problem. But I also had these SMD tantalum caps that were a perfect match and might just last a bit longer. Now both channels are working perfectly, with 5.5 digit resolution even. Pretty cool meter, as soon as it gets its new cooling fan at least. So let's take care of that. Let's see if we are lucky enough to find a good cooling fan in one of these boxes. Yeah, there might be one in here. some very nice Pabst ball bearing fans in here, but those are all for a lower voltage. And I wouldn't want to tap into an existing power supply rail, because that can introduce noise into the system. I think I'll delay that modification and instead calibrate and play around with my electrometer. For the calibration they want you to use a special calibration cover that allows the instrument to reach its normal operating temperature while exposing the adjustment potentiometers. Makes sense, I guess, but sorry, I don't have that. I'll try to compensate with a couple of covered minutes between every adjustment. We'll start yet again by warming up all the instruments that will be involved in the calibration. Keithley 619, Keithley 2000 and Knick JS300. Then, after some time has passed, we can start with adjustment number 1, input amplifier 0. In the most sensitive voltage range, with 0 check engaged, We'll adjust the appropriate potentiometer until zero is displayed. Next we'll adjust the ADC reference voltages by applying 190 millivolt and 1.9 volt to the electrometer input and adjusting the appropriate potentiometers until those values are displayed as correctly as possible. That scheme is repeated for the following 19 steps, with slight variations. I'll save some time and spare you the video documentation of those. 
Since the last electrometer video, only two more experiments came to mind. If you want to see a separate experiment video with this machine, I need some more input. I have bought some low noise triaxial cable and a couple of Teflon plates. But first I think I'm making a cooking video.